Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Bills Roundtable. Rest in peace, OJ Simpson. It's probably one of the most difficult lines to walk. All yeah. right. <laughs> As Zeba was explaining to me some of the variations of headlines he has been seeing of reporters struggling on how to report the news. It is a Bills legend has died. Zebot, how you doing? Doing well. Uh yeah, the the line that ESPN was trying to uh or not just them, I guess, everybody that would that was related to sports. The line they were trying to uh, kind of strangle was, yeah, you know, 2000 yards in 14 games. And you know, that thing that happened in 1998. So it was very interesting to watch how the whole situation was being handled. Some people were extremely candid. I don't know if you saw, um, Oh God, uh, Kyle Brandt, Kyle Brandt on Twitter posts a three second video. He goes, my thoughts on OJ Simpson. And he just goes, murderer and then it ends that's the video so it's been a variety I, twitter everybody's been going crazy over it but certainly a huge story um i didn't even know he was sick so yeah r.i.p oj and so is this your official statement on the oj situation because me personally i sort of stay away from topics like this same i have no statement at all. <laughs> i don't say anything r.i.p i got nothing to say i mean i think it's pretty obvious goes without saying that's why i was not envious of those having to uh to do the actual reporting because if you're in a sports situation the reason you're reporting on the guy is because of what he did in sports but then you have yeah. to put your news anchor hat on and talk about stuff that you weren't probably you're thinking about you know talking about the masters nba playoffs coming up now you got to talk about all this stuff and you can tell it's like it, it is a very tough line to to cross over, especially when it just falls on your desk out of nowhere, you know? Yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely understand. Kev, what's up with you, man? How you doing today? Two weeks of the draft. That's where I'm fo literally to this minute. Yes. That's kind of where I'm at with the whole topic. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, I'm super so pumped. You seem you pumped. Like, have you found like a new way or anything like a different strategy? What's, what's good. I Talk mean, to you know, I've been messing around with some trades um and i'm not usually a trade guy i think that's cheap like anybody can make a trade that they think is like a lot better than they'd actually get and go get their guy but uh mm -hmm. i've been messing around a little bit with more realistic style of stuff and i think that the, the trade down in the seconds interesting to me um to grab a two-thirds that's that's what i've been messing two around with lately two-thirds from washington mm. come up and give me their 67th pick and a late round late late third pick 100 uh for that 60. So I've been flirting around with some some ideas that can get the bills back a couple of day two, day, day two picks, but have fun with that, it, man. I hope they do it early in the night. That's all I ask Kevin if they do that. So Are I'm not day sitting two? around. Yeah. No, yeah. So I'm not just like sitting around till yeah. the twenty first pick. Like, what are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? Oh my god, we gotta wait till the third round, you know. Yeah. That's interesting. I haven't even heard that be brought up, but that's certainly interesting. Hmm. Dude, I mean, honestly, it's just, you know, it's uh, weeks away, folks. It's weeks away, folks. And I've been seeing people get crazy on the internet. Oh, I've yeah. I've seeing people go up and try and trade up into the top 10 for oh. Romo Dunze. I've seen crazy mock drafts where people try and go up and get Marvin Harrison Jr. by sending over an absolute haul to get to five. Wow. I've seen that be brought up for us as soon as today. Not Marvin Harrison Jr., but I saw six was brought up today by the uh, beat reporter for the F one of them, at least someone who covers the NFL for the <laughs> athletic pick, no, pick yeah. nines about it. If you're going higher than nine, I just don't believe you. you I don't can't get higher than that. I, I, I it makes no sense to me. Plus I just feel like it would be, I mean, I can't even imagine the, the, the weight of knowing that that's the move made probably what it took to make it. And then the pressure for that, to, I mean, the pressure is going to be high enough if you move up towards the top 10, but up to six, I mean, the guy is going to have to literally be an instant top 10 receiver for anybody to feel halfway decent about it. An instant top 10. It's funny because Richie actually was laughing at me the other day when I did that because, I mean, it was shits and giggles. It was like my <laughs> 70th mock draft I've ever done in my entire life, and I traded with the New York Giants. I'm like, hey, you know, shine and... And Bean used to be golf buddies. Why not go on ahead? I'm sure that he'd hear him out for a little while. And he was essentially saying, like, why would you trade up that far for a wide receiver in that point and sort of sacrifice the future at the end of the day? Which, which made sense. Which made sense. I'm still like a trade up kind of guy, but it's 
it's frustrating because like some of the guys that I'm targeting that I love, I think that both of you know that I'm a massive Brian Thomas Jr. guy, like no questions asked, but he's fallen all over the board. I know he's one of those guys that no one seems to have. Uh, no one seems to have a linear stance on his rough area of where he's going to go. I agree with you completely. It's all over the place with him. Mm -hmm. And so what are you thinking on that, Kev? And so I know you're a Lab McConkey guy. I am. I'm a stick stick around where I'm picking kind of guy. Um, specifically, there's a couple. I think like, look, Worthy's a guy to watch out for right now. I think he does everything right. He's not a guy that's super duper high on most people's boards, but the speed, the ability to adjust, the rack, the zero drop rate, the separation. Those are all things that the Bills look for. So Worthy is a definite name to keep your eye on. When they trade up a couple spots and it's for someone like Worthy, that wouldn't shock me. Um, mm -hmm. But ultimately the BTJ trade, yeah, watch them get up to, to, to 9, 10, 11, 12 and draft BTJ way earlier than people thought. I Sure, mm -hmm. that's on the board. One year of production. Don't know how I would feel about it. Uh, but ultimately does check the boxes of what the Bills would be looking for and has visited. So. Got it. Spins coming in and saying that all you got to do is sit around until pick nine. There you go. And so it will be an early draft night. Have a lot of people coming on in at the end of the day. John is saying, would JK move back? But they say the Chiefs are projecting Xavier Leggett. Well, I mean, from what we understand, Lab McConkey seems to be like their like number one target right there. Yeah. So if he's there, even know, man. yeah, yeah. And I mean, honestly, man, like I'm like looking at all of these and it's, it's tough to really look through prospects and predict like, Hey, they're going to translate in the NFL wonderfully, or this person is, or this person is not. And so are there any red flag candidates? And this could be like with any position, like somebody that you think has bus written all over them. Obviously I know that Bill's fans probably just want to hear about wide receivers, but like, are there any names that are getting way too much praise that you would cringe at the fact if the Buffalo bills were to pick them up? In any of the rounds, first one through three, Cav, we'll start with you. Like, who in are your biggest the, red flags in any of the rounds? Are you saying? Um, I say we stick it around like rounds one through three. Okay, okay. Um, a guy I think hmm, that I think might be getting a little bit too much praise. I'm not an AD Mitchell guy. Mm. Um, talk to me because everybody in the world loves that guy for the Buffalo. I'm has, not either. Surprise has had a good off season. A good tr combine uh, takes plays off. I just don't think he's a natural fit for what the Bills and Josh Allen do. Bills will not like that. That's not what they're looking for coming off of their re receiver situation right now. I think someone could take a high shot on a potential, maybe even the Chiefs. Uh, I just don't think it's the Bills. I, I It's questionable to me. He does have the skill set, um, but it's challenging. to. to it, if he's there solely at 28, may definitely don't want to trade up for the guy. But A.D. Mitchell is a, is a guy I'm a little bit mm, concerned about for a lot of different ways. And can Worthy translate? That's the other one. But I think that there are some trans translatable data that now is pointing to me saying, like, he could even be his favorite as a for the Bills, too. Well, yeah, See, I'll be honest with you. I think both. 28, though, right? Those are the guys that they're going to be targeting in on, right? That that's yeah. where the That's where those names start to pop up. In most mock drafts. So between the two, I guess, Kevin, in that, in that stance, say those two are on the board, but Conkey's gone. Oof. You uh, going with Worthy? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going Worthy. Personally, I yeah. think he's a he has a translatable data that the Bills are looking for. I go Worthy all day. I, I'm worried about I'm worried about the two Texas guy. I'm worried about specifically AD. Um, and then, like, you got to think about Keon Coleman, like, in terms of – can he separate? I don't know, but um, ultimately, AD is a guy I'm, I'm I'm concerned about with with some of the you know some of the, the plays off he takes and the struggling with his strength and technique has been an issue for sure. So using with NFL draft buzz like all of his weaknesses, uh, he's inconsistent with yards after the catch, struggles with contested catches, so lacks things that Bills want, <laughs> lacks proficiency as a blocker, and route running can sometimes lack focus. Leading the all the things the Bills want, all those, all those categories. So. Yeah, so I think we can sort of wipe our hands clean of an AD Mitchell going in with it. And honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. I am so concerned with Xavier Worthy's size, man. I am so concerned. I know everyone is in love uh, with so with so the uh, Smith. 
uh, right out of Philly. And I understand that it's a similar sort of receiver, similar like uh, size by itself. But I feel like to a point, it's almost an anomaly. And I just don't think that he's big enough that he's going to be able to compete against some of those like physical DBs. Yeah, he's fast. That's great. But if he's getting pressed by like the Jalen Ramseys of the world or like the sauces of the world, like truly big and like stout, like corners, Mm. I just see him struggling just getting off of the line in general. That's why like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of afraid of worthy myself. I had a take saying that I think that both Texas receivers are about to be busts Mm. and are not going to translate into the NFL. Either or, huh? Both of them. (laughs) <laughs> yeah Gosh. both of them Z-Bot, i think both think? of them will not do well in the nfl yeah hmm. i i don't know i have a i have an opposite take on the washington stance where i think odunze and polk are going to wind up being two that hit so maybe that'll be the opposite take of the texas thing i really like polk a lot i've been starting to see a little bit more buzz surrounding him but those two to yeah. me i think when we look back on it i think odunze ends up being the best receiver from round one and I think that Jeremy Polk could wind up being one of those guys that you look back on from the day two type picks, and he looks like more of a, wow, maybe we should have considered him a little higher than other teams did type guy. I loved that Washington offense. Penix falls in that in that category for me as well. In fact, I heard today, and you know how this goes. I mean, this happens all the time. Uh, you hear one consistent take on the order of these quarterbacks, and then a month before the draft, all of a sudden – you know, Drake may now might be falling down the board and, 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 uh, and whatnot. But the one thing I, I had heard as recently as today is Michael Penix might be considered the second best quarterback in this draft. And I, right, I don't know right if now? It's that far. Yeah. I don't know if it goes that far, but I love Michael Penix as well. I just love mm. that Washington team. So there's, there's something to that, maybe, Dan, where you're thinking the two Texas guys might bust out. I think Washington will look back and they wind up supplying a lot of star power for this uh for this upcoming next generation here see it's funny because i just started hearing hype about polk right like i, I know like, i've always seen him in all these mock drafts and i was just like why the hell is no one talking about this guy he must not be efficient he's six foot one he's a boundary receiver right i think the issue with him right is that he's slower right or maybe i'm thinking of another and so I don't know what profile. the biggest difference. I don't know if I don't see a major difference between him and a couple of these other guys, like like uh, Mitchell there, for instance, at the in the late twenties. There, I don't know if I see the discrepancy that translates to one being considered a first round pick and the other not being anywhere near the first round in box. I, and that's where you start to wonder in the Bills situation if you get down to twenty eight and they haven't done anything yet. Maybe that's where I start to get more and more comfortable with doing something like what you had mentioned earlier, Kevin, and trading back for a couple of picks to use because I don't know if I see that big of a talent discrepancy and the more chances you get to land one, the better. And I think maybe if you get to that point, that might wind up being the most logical solution for Buffalo. He got a 9.11 Raz, so it's not like he's not athletic. Um, so that's um, the, the, the one knock would be his straight 40 times a four five. Um, yeah, that was it. I thought, um, yeah. but like explosive verts 37, five, he's got a 10, nine broad jump. Um, you know, his weights there, his height weights fine. Sure. Could be a tiny bit faster straight line. Um, uh, but a nine 11 Raz based on his agility is fairly decent. So it is a guy that I think you have to take take seriously i have him in the top of the second round so he could very well with worthy he he really should be in that worthy troy franklin keon coleman range especially if you miss out on the top four and i've heard many scouts already tell me that i trust that btj is not that far separated from anybody else's board in the second tier Mm -hmm. so everybody has him as the next guy as the fourth guy but there's a lot of discussion right now. How much different is he than Lad? Is he than Troy Franklin? There's been a lot of discussions that there's not a ton of, or than Polk. There's not a ton of movement right now. And maybe teams will feel comfortable staying where they're at in the draft and or moving back. I do still think the Bills want the fifth year option. I think that's huge yeah. for negotiating. You have four players playing on it right now. It's a huge tool, especially at the receiver position. Bean almost always negotiates it into their current contract. 
uh, if they get a second contract in every situation. So they want it. I don't see them going for an asset and losing that that cap tool uh, in four years. Is now double dipping in the draft for wide receiver. I think all of us are on the same page that I think we walk away with two. Um, we're probably staying away from like a guy that's a slot, right? It's probably going to be a double dipped. Like I felt the, better about that before Diggs. Oh. Now I don't know. Now they just might go versatile. They might just go versatile. Like I can't say with Samuel going all over the formation. They say that, um, you know, their top receivers right now, Samuel and Shakir are versatile. They may just continue that train. So I would not rule out guys like Ricky Pearsall, amazing talent. He's working out with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle right now. Dude, he's a guy, another guy, second, second round value. He's going to be super good. Uh, some people think he's a slot. He's not. He can play both, just like Lad yeah. McConkey can. My guy, yeah. Malik Washington, I will not be shocked as if he's really good. He's super good. He just showed out at Virginia. Um, will he get the slot label? I certainly hope not because he's going to be a really good third-round pick, and people are going to wonder why he went in the third. Uh, what about Malachi Corley out of Western Kentucky? That's another one. Yeah. He's another one he can throw in that camp. So it's super talented where the Bills, I think, well, they felt comfortable trading digs for a next year second because I think that they very much have a plan to double dip. Will it be first and second? That I don't know. Can they wait to the four, trade up to the three to maybe get a guy like Corley? Taz Walker, they've had in on visits and all types of different things, meetings and interviews and top 30 visits. Um, Jamari Thrash is a guy that's really good. Malik Washington, Javon Baker. Um, these are all guys that will be there for us. Um, so the Bills may feel pretty comfortable with double dipping. And Corley's just just an all-around gamer, too. He's a guy that would be higher. He went to Western Kentucky, but he's a guy that would be higher without the loaded class. Mm -hmm. Do you guys think the amount of free agent wide receivers next year factors in at all to what they end up doing this year at the position? Because if you go and look at who winds up hitting the free agency market next year, especially compared to this year, it's pretty I haven't even seen that list. It's pretty wild. So there's there's some major names on there. Um, obviously, some aren't going to hit the free agency market before they get re-signed by teams. But um, you know, you just go look, go and look through it. You know, Justin Jefferson is going to wind up getting to that situation if they don't wind up figuring out a deal. Jamar Chase is going to wind up getting to that situation. Uh, yeah. Devontae Smith gets there. C.D. Lamb gets there. There's a ton of names. T. Higgins on there. is still on a one year deal at the moment. Exactly. I mean, the, he he's the one that's the hottest topic right now but even the mid-tier guys as well Ayuk. yeah exactly there's a ton of names yeah. and um it's something i hadn't considered because i'm just thinking about the moment right now but it, it's also something i wonder you know it, it, if the mindset surrounding trading up or not might be dialed back a bit in but pursuit can, of getting a guy later and then maybe trying to make it a huge move in free agency next year and read off the list to find Diggs, now a free agent t higgins sure. Uh, Keenan Allen, Chris Godwin, Amari Cooper, Brandon Cooks, Deontay Johnson, DeAndre Hopkins, Mike Williams, Zay Jones, Jamar Chase, Hollywood Brown, Robert Woods, Jalen Waddle will wow. have an option. Um, Devontae Smith will have some form of an option. Um, so it's it's a fairly sizable, pretty big list. Brandon Ayuk didn't mention there. Uh, so you're right. It should factor into what they'll do for sure. But mm. the thing is, those teams all control with that franchise tag and we've seen it used. Yeah. Um, so it should, but the bills may need to have some form of Intel if they think how many of those they think will get tagged up. Um, yeah. And I really like the option to go get one of them. Now that's what I like personally. Go get them. Now, if you're, if those are in your plans, get them on a year cheaper, get them in the system and get them rocking. Um, if you can make a deal because Bean loves to loves that fifth year option for players. Mm -hmm. So you're still in an ideal world making a move prior to two weeks from tonight and having it squared away during the draft, maybe based on how it falls during. right after. Um, but yes, I am in the camp of if they get the two guys they were looking for, there's no need to make a move, I guess. Sure. Um, but yes, like on day two, day three, their move could be made. We've seen AJ Brown and Hollywood Brown get traded on day one, uh, two yep. years ago. So I think that, the Bills could have similar talks, and they have always been interested, starting with Calvin Benjamin all the way to Manuel Sanders they almost traded for. So they've had discussions with receivers at points. They traded, obviously, for Jordan Matthews. They've had receivers at points on the last year of their deal that they think they can acquire at a second, third, or fourth round pick. They have an extra second next year, and they could use a future pick and still have their whole draft this year. I think there's benefit there not having to pay them that $80 million either. 
See, I'll tell you what, out of those three big names right now, so that are free agents. And so I wish that there was a line somewhere that I could like bet, but one of those three names will be traded on draft night. Probably so T Higgins. That's either Justin Jefferson or it's Brandon Ayuk. I think I think it's Ayuk. Oh, Personally. you think so? I, I I do because I if you look at if you look at San Francisco's situation, um, I mean that that feels like it, it's. I mean I know you're not paying Purdy anything, but that situation seems like it could be one that makes sense for both parties. I don't yeah. know if they're going to be able to pay him the type of money that he's going to want in regard to what they already have on that team and what they're paying. I also, with the T Higgins situation, the reason I just continuously rule it out for Buffalo is I just, in, in what world to me does Cincinnati look at the bills and say, here you go. Now we're going to hand you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just can't, sure. I can't sure. foresee. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think the IU thing comes down more to finances than w compared to the C the Higgins situation where it's just like, I want out. It doesn't mean they're going to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, I mean, I'm under the impression that I think out of all three of those names right now. Who's the third you have you're talking about? A uh, third that's was Jefferson, and that's just basically all out of speculation mm -hmm. because I think he's, like, in a very, like, intriguing position uh, where, like, he has Sam Darnold as a starter, that, and they could draft the QB, and he could turn out to be a bust, and he gets a mega contract from Minnesota, and then, boom, he's now Calvin Johnson. He's the next Calvin Johnson. So I can see a world – and depending on what Justin Jefferson, how, like what motivates him. And so is it money or is it, does he actually want to compete? And does he actually want to go down as one of the greats, like have a ring, have the accolades? I don't necessarily see him wanting to be in Minnesota, like with all the question marks, like on that. But I will say that I think that T Higgins out of all three of those names, I think that he probably has the most likelihood of holding out. If for example, he does not get traded. What are they going to do with Chase? They have to pay. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, I just that, don't know. And what Burrow's contract's going to hit in a couple of years too. Like it's it's just financially impossible for there's them to pay T. Higgins what he wants. There's a bit of a delusion epidemic currently at the wide receiver position. I think like when you're looking at within the own building of Cincinnati, you got a guy in Jamar Chase who's clearly better than T. Higgins, who is yet to get paid, and T. Higgins is the one causing the fuss about getting out, knowing. He's not going to make that type of money. They're going to have to pay that type of money to his own teammate. And yet they're expecting that type of money. And I think Brandon Ayuk is in a similar position. I mean, the numbers they're throwing around for Justin Jefferson is borderline quarterback money, what, what they're considering <laughs> giving to him. And there's yeah. guys out there that think that they're in the same tier, and they're not. And that's kind of an issue I've seen widespread throughout the wide receiver position. And it's gotten to the point. And I think it's the one thing that if we could give any flowers to Tom Brady as Bills fans, it was that during his era, the suppression he had on the overall market of the NFL was so palpable that we never really understood what happens when these dominoes fall, when one guy takes the most and the next guy takes the most, because he was never making the most money. And now that's what it is now, no matter how good you are. I mean, with Tua, you know, Tua might be next up here. Like, how can you as the agent or as the team or whoever with a straight face look at Mahomes' contract and be like, oh, well, you're next up to us. So, hey, here's a half a billion to continue. Here's to a half a bill. I, it blows my mind. And it happens yeah. not just quarterback. It, it, wide receiver to me is it, it's become the, the quarterback position is where this all started. And this is yeah. the next phase of it. It, it. it won't happen with running back because everybody's realized we'll just draft one, this and that. But I think the the one deterrent to this might be the amount of successful wide receivers in the league there currently are in later round picks. So that that might be the the one thing that I ends up settling it more like in correlation to the running back market. But but damn, some of the money these guys want it, it's 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 hard to justify based on where they are and where they think they are on this hierarchy of of, of wide receivers. Absolutely. And speaking of money, folks and boys, <laughs> finally. Mm, that's that U.S. has some of the lines, and some of these are interesting. All right. Bo Nix over under 32nd overall. Like I said, Brian Thomas over 16 and a half, under 16 and a half. Have all of these different lines right now. Like, is so the total pack 12 players in the first round? Oh, over under. Dude, this is absolutely insane. Folks, if you have no idea what we are showing you right now, this is none other than the Bet U.S. Sportsbook. 
best sports book on the face of the planet. And then get this, okay? It is the number one online sports book in which they are offering 125% deposit match up to $2,500 of your first three deposits. And that means that if you put $500, that's $1,250 for you to play around with 24 to 7 customer support. BetUS is the place to be. Just definitely go ahead and check out that link in our description. Should be pinned at the top of the chat. And also, by the way, we are giving away $125 worth of free bets. So the first five people that DM the AFC East Roundtable on Twitter that show that they have a BetUS account, we will add an additional $25 for you to play with. So definitely go ahead and check that out. Dan, do me a favor. Is there a J.J. McCarthy line on there? I don't know if there is. I don't want – I don't mean to put it in the spot – over wow. five. Okay. Five and a half? That's they're saying five it. and a half? That's where I thought the line would be. Okay. So they're probably thinking the Vikings trade up for him or something like that. Oh, my God. I, Woo. I, you, we were talking earlier about the guy, the red flag guy that you'd be uh, just blown away by for the Bills. That's my guy for the draft right there. I, oh boy, I, I cannot understand it. So I, I, the under oh, to me, McCarthy. Yes, the under to me, rightfully at at minus two hundred. Um, I, I, my God, I, I can't imagine a, a, the uh, over five and a half. But uh, we, it's all we've been hearing for the last month. I mean, you know, shout out Jim Harbaugh, hell of a salesman. I mean, just uh, I- exceptional job he's done boosting his uh, his draft stock. But good God, dude, I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it. <laughs> This is over five and a half cornerbacks gone, defensive players. I'm trying to put something down here. Okay. And the total quarterbacks drafted in the first. Oh. Yeah, that over line seems right at minus 230. I would definitely say over. You'd say over to that? I'm trying to find some safeties are interesting. (laughs) And over under a half? I'd probably take. Yeah, I haven't seen a single model. I mean, maybe Newbin goes. Maybe. Maybe Newbin and then receiver six and a half over under. That that's the one that's a lot of fun to me because I think it falls right near that line, right at that six or seven mark. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna take the over on this situation right here and then knock it out. Let's just put a 50 spot right there, baby. Look at that. Love it. I think that's the angle I would take. I think it's goes slightly over. 50 bucks over six and a half receivers taken in the first round. But yeah, guys, definitely go ahead and check out Bet US. Proud partner of Roundtable Sports. But Zbot, we didn't really hear like any like draft scares from you. I mean, obviously outside of JJ McCarthy. <laughs> but um, I feel like none of us have talked about Troy Franklin for a while. He has practiced with Buffalo. I'm pretty sure he had a workout yesterday. He put out a vlog or something like that saying that he was going up to Buffalo to go have a workout at their facility and stuff. Um, me personally his combine sort of just didn't do it for me. I was kind of scared of it, but I don't know. My biggest fear isn't necessarily tied to a player. It's more so, it's more, more so tied to the result of this draft in hindsight, because there's going to be one or two things that they do. I think, I think a trades made no matter what, whether it's down or up the the likelihood to me of staying at 28 has increasingly gone down, especially after the dig situation. If I had to put my money out, I would say they go up or down, right? All this talk about going up and you know, if if they don't end up doing it and all of these receivers wind up becoming the next, you know, the next wave here generational, it's going to be a major regret, regardless of what they would have had to have given up to have not obtained one of them. And if they move back and they don't end up getting that answer at wide receiver, I just don't know where it comes from in the foreseeable future here within at least the, this this year. It just feels like it would be a year gone by if they don't get an adequate answer at wide receiver one in this draft. So to me, it's more of a fear of mismanaging a very, very crucial situation. You can mismanage a draft as a good team and still get by with flying colors. This is a more, this is the most surgical type draft. I think Brandon Bean has faced, which means there's far more room for error. And that to me is where my biggest fear comes from, because I just think that there is an opportunity 
in this draft to go one of two ways. One, who's Stefan Diggs, right? You get the guy and there's going to be, uh, you know, you're going to be a year in and say, wow, this wound up working out. Or, man, look at Stefan Diggs balling in Houston and we g- g- can't move the ball down the field. So th- that's where I'm at. The crazy thing is, I think the answer's there, but the ability to miss out on that answer is certainly a situation that could occur for these Bills just based on how things pan out. And that's why, I don't know about you guys, but to me going into this draft, it's the most nervous I've been. As as good as we've been with Josh Allen, I haven't been nervous about the draft. I've just been more intrigued about the decision-making to add to this already damn good team. Now it's more, it ain't that, you know, that comfortability level we've enjoyed over the last five years. So that's where I'm at right now. No, it's a very uncomfortable situation. I mean, once that dig situation came to fruition, my first thought was this. I was, I was already saying, in my opinion, this is the biggest draft Brandon beans had in terms of having to really nail it. And once that happened, I mean, if I was saying it before then, what does it make it now? You know? So I I don't know. It's uh, it's, it's scary. I think there's no other way to put it. It, it, It's scary, but I I have trust in Bean, and I look forward to what he winds up, winds up doing. So, okay. So hear me out now. Uh, Last year when we ended up going six and six, and so obviously McDermott was up for question and everyone was like, he needs to go. He's done. He's out with this lack of supporting cast, obviously prior to the draft by itself. Is there a world where if the Bills underperform, he's gone? Or since the roster was basically gutted this year in free agency, has that bottom an insurance policy? Or do you still think that he's on the hot seat, if at all? I never thought he was. I I, I didn't, and I don't now, and I don't think. I mean, unless next year, and this is without a Josh Allen injury being factored into it, if they get next year they go like like six and eleven. Okay, yeah. then my stance will probably change significantly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But to me, and I know people, I get called a being a or a McDermott apologist all the time. Yeah, and to me, losing on on a player two against the Chiefs, like everybody else has, isn't grounds for termination. When I watched yeah. what it, the the defense was capable of achieving last year in a situation where I don't know if they achieve what they did without the coaching that they had in place, so I don't, I don't think there is a situation next year where those two guys are gone because I think it's a almost a package deal at this point. I can't yeah. see them moving off from one and not the other. Yeah. Um, I guess if they did, it would inevitably be McDermott before Bean, but it would be yeah. a situation I, I just don't foresee. Regardless, I don't see either of them going, and it would take a very major fall off in order for me to, to change my mind on that. And so I feel like Brandon Bean would stay regardless. So what about you, Kev? Yeah, is the I think hot for McDermott. No, not at all. Not at I think all. What he think? was able to do in back-to-back years after the Demar situation, uh, that I that I think the team competed pretty heavily down the stretch with some brutal injuries last year, and yeah. just as long as you win four, five, six, seven games at the end of every single season to put right. you in position to win a division, you're just not on the hot seat. Unfortunately, it came down to using your fifth and sixth linebackers against Mahomes, and you read attacks linebackers. It's pretty. It's pretty a basic 101 of what Andy Reid likes to do. Like, also a missed cover three in the end zone for a touchdown to Travis Kelsey that wouldn't have been missed with Christian Benford. Ultimately, the Bills competed at a super high level. We're up in that game for much of it. Probably if they get through that, we'll see what would have happened. It just not grounds for termination. I know no. people are like a little bit upset with like uh, maybe some decisions like 12 men. I mean, that's more of a special teams error. Um, yeah. Didn't end up costing them the two too much, even if they won that and the Jets game, they still wouldn't have been the one seed. Ultimately, I don't know what he's cost the team as far as coaching. We still could go back to 13 seconds. Um, but at some point, another special teams error blunder. Um, I, I, I don't know. Like to me, he's yeah. safe. He would have to go back to back years. So if he if he misses the playoffs, he will be officially on the hot seat. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's when it starts. It doesn't start this minute. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally agree. And and a pass on a Josh Allen injury. Yeah. See, see, I feel like that say that he misses the playoffs this year 
And so in my opinion, I think with like the league's obsession with offensive minded coaches and the fact that Ben, ben Johnson, Johnson yeah. and Bobby Slowick were still offensive coordinators at that point. And if news around the street is that both of them are going to once again start interviewing for head coaching positions, I think that would sway one way. Uh, one way or the other. Possibly. I mean, it's interesting, especially with those yeah. two names, because you forget that they decided to stay put. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't forget and, how bad Ben Johnson did, though, this interviewing session. He, he oh, came across terrible. Bad, yeah. How bad his interviews went. Yeah. Didn't, and, and also, didn't he say he was going to interview and then did, and they were already on the flight yeah. or whatever? And I know that left a lot of animosity. Gosh, Daniels vibes. <laughs> Well, listen, if you're even getting an inkling of that, I want nothing to do with it, even though I'm a big fan of Ben Johnson. But um, it, that's a good point. I think you both made good points right there, uh, Kevin, in the fact that you can start 9-1, and 10-1 and one like Nick Sirianni, but if you shit yourself down the stretch, you will your seat will be blazing. It, as long as you win, like you said, Kevin, six, seven game, it, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. And um, and for that reason, I have no, I have no evidence – to back up the Bills not being a competitive team at the end of the year. So that's one point. And then has he lost point, in yeah. December or January? Like in years? I don't think he has. No. I what <laughs> is his record in December? I thought it was one Tampa Bay loss. It's like to Brady. It's Brady. Yeah. It's literally like four cooks. It was in overtime, by the yeah. way, that game. Yeah. I I you know what? I think you might be right because Josh Allen's record in December is something absurd. And that of course would be McDermott's record. I mean, you can throw away the year prior. Who really gives a shit about that year? So, yeah, no, it's 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 absurdly good, and it's all and they've all been gigantic games, all all division clinching games, playoff style games, needing to beat yeah, needing to beat the Dolphins multiple times, whatever it is. It's usually yeah, comes down to you can't you can't choke to these teams like in in a situation in a gimme game against the twenty third against the Chargers where everyone looked sleepy right before Christmas, they still came away with it. So. Sure. That, and that's the thing too. And, and that's the one thing about last year that bugged me the most is they would win and it, it would, it, it would be nonstop criticism of, of the play in which they just, you know, won the game. And that was at its peak in the chiefs game. All yeah. you heard about afterwards was how poorly the offense was managed, how bad the game plan was, how bad the coaching was. I don't After know we won. else. No, I'm talking about, well, yeah, the majority yeah. of the game, they won, what, six in a row, six to seven, whatever, seven. Yeah, row, eight. and people were still, yeah. Yeah, but it peaked after afraid. the Chiefs game. And I and I go and watch the MVP and the hottest team in the league after their second possession couldn't gain a yard on the Chiefs the following week. So I, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know what everyone thinks will magically happen if the pitchforks finally win and, and McDermott goes away, does that mean Andy Reid all of a sudden gets infinitely worse and Mahomes starts to suck and, and the rest of the AFC starts to fall off a cliff? I certainly yeah. don't think so. And nobody's been more competitive than Buffalo. And if you say these things, you get called uh, an apologist, you get called an excuse maker. And I, I just, I don't quite understand what everybody thinks the, the outcome of a situation like that will be because we've seen like to your point, Dan, this is the best point I think that you can make in terms of what everybody likes to say. And it's true when you're talking about slow and Ben Johnson. Oh, why wouldn't we want that? Kyle Shanahan is considered maybe the best offensive mind, not only in the game right now, but one of the best young offensive minds in recent memory. Hmm. And in the two biggest games of his life, they played exceptionally well down to the final drive and could not win. Sounds yeah. familiar. So if you're yeah. going to go and get Kyle Shanahan, because at the end of the day, you can only pray Ben Johnson and Slowick become Kyle Shanahan. Yeah. It's still happening to Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, we don't so, know. What do you want? What or Sirianni do you want? or pick pick your pick your like defensive coaches are still making yes. the playoffs. They're still advancing. Like yes, yeah. Look at this mm -hmm. hiring cycle. Wasn't it five defensive coordinators? It more, like I think it was. I think it was yeah, more defensive than offensive. I think that, that was the first time in a while. Yeah. Yes. It's all about your combo, your coach to coordinator yeah. combo. Mm -hmm. So if you're an offensive or defensive coach, who is your offensive combo? Yeah. The Bills have hit it with Dable. Like at some point, like it's about the combo. It's not like they run the offense. 
it's a one sign as well, especially since we like have like two new coordinators who are relatively young. I think that that's probably also a pretty good sign right. that he's two he's young here. potential head coaching candidates at some point. Like yeah. Bobby Babbage absolutely is. And yeah. we'll see about Brady. And then like, you're only hoping that that to, to, to Z-Bot's point that they're good at Shanahan, but also like, and your defense not fall off a cliff. That's the other thing. No one ever wants to say that, Kevin. No one ever wants to talk because it's so Josh Allen oriented. That when they talk right. about firing McDermott, no one wants to bring up, oh, have we considered the defense might regress considerably? If so, have we considered that? You just turn into the Chargers. It, yeah. It, absurd to me. No one considers that. There's two things no one consider with, with McDermott. They don't consider ever giving him any credit for when things go good. Like last year, the people who wanted him gone, he curried no favor at the end of the year with those people, regardless of what he was able to overcome, which is insane to me because if you don't, if you don't move up the totem pole then, show me an area – uh, where you're going to wind up being able to accomplish that. And then the other thing, you, you just said it, Kevin. No one says, hey, I know I might want McDermott gone, but man, you know, uh, this defense has been one of the best in the league with them every single year with no, no matter the personnel in there. Could it take a step back? No one talks about that. So I think, I think you would see it on full display yeah. if you left. You would notice in a quick, in a quick minute how, how that yeah. defense changes. And first off, like nothing grinds my gears more. Like when people are like, oh my God, like Joe Burrow beat Josh Allen. I'm like, oh yeah, I just see Josh Allen with pads out there running with the linebackers. What the hell are you talking about? Right. And three feet of, in like, in like eight inches. It kills me when people are like, oh yeah, man, my quarterback beat your quarterback. I'm like, fool, that's not how it works. Lou Anarumo, who's notoriously been good. That's the funny part. If the Bills ever moved on from McDermott, watch them interview Lou Anarumo. Like, yeah, everybody like, assumes you're going to get this next great offensive coach. We have no idea. Yeah, Lynn Arumo yeah. has been as good at stopping these high end quarterbacks as anybody. Like, literally, yeah. is one of the most successful coaches against Allen and Mahomes in the league. Why wouldn't you get that guy? So, then, so ultimately, you have the offense, you feel pretty good about Josh Allen. Like, you're third to five in every category. Okay, maybe you get to one or two and you compete with Shanahan. Great. Mm -hmm. But, like, ultimately, yeah. you probably feel pretty comfortable at your yeah. offensive coordinator connection yeah. with a guy like Lou Anarumo. Yeah. Who, Definitely deserved to be in this cycle, by the way. So I'm bummed that he's still in Cincinnati. I was hoping he would be gone. And Callahan did get hired. But ultimately, we'll see how Bur Burrow manages that now. Yeah. But, dude, who said Lou Anarumo so just like this? These, yeah. And so all of these, like, super intelligent, offensive-minded head coaches as well, like the Chiefs, for example, the Super Bowl-winning Rams, the San Francisco 49ers, all of them have elite defense. Too by the way, like all of them have, I mean, yeah, they yeah. defense, man. So it's it's interesting because, like, you look at how the Bills play the Chiefs, and to be honest with you, I think that we probably have the best team that plays them the tightest out of anybody in the AFC. Like, Every you look year. at some of their other Bills playoff matchups, it, it's not even close. It's the Bills and the Baltimore Bears. couldn't move the ball, no, they could not do anything, anything. And they had they had an infinite amount of opportunities. Their defense played great in that game. Baltimore. Yeah. They, they, they gave Lamar an endless amount of opportunity. Could not do a damn thing. If and Josh even still didn't they stop him seven straight times, Mahomes, hmm. or something six to eight? I can't remember the exact the exact statistic. The Bills got two stopped. Was it one or two? Two? It was one fumble through the end zone and one. Yes, stop. that was one of them. <laughs> so um, yes. I mean, they they shut them down. They scored on the second drive of the game. They matched it. They tied the game. And the only points they scored the rest of the way were a garbage time Justin Tucker field goal. And you still got people trying to tell you that <laughs> Josh Allen, he shits himself in the playoffs. You still got people trying to tell you that the Bills are the ones that, you know, uh, they're, they're the carbon or whatever. They're the cookie cutter sheet that everybody takes after in regard to blowing it to the Chiefs. And it's like, it's just uh, no one ever wants to put the correlation together that it's happening league wide. The only losses that Mahomes and the Chiefs have suffered in the playoffs have come to Tom Brady and one Cincinnati Bengal loss. That is it. Yeah. So you can pick on the Bills all and you that want. that defensive coordinator. <laughs> and that defensive coordinator who knows how to <laughs> tackle Patrick Mahomes, man. It's yeah. and then and it, but this is it's just it's just the product of the environment. I mean you got Shady McCoy the other day having to argue his face off about Josh Allen being better than Mah uh, Aaron Rodgers right now. I mean this is just it's just the age we're in where it's just these things are constantly thrown in your face and you're just like how, how about the workout story guys are you are you buying into this this he likes to take his time off and golf are you like into that story or are you like hating it it, it annoys the hell out of me 
Okay. People are blaming the, 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 the demise of Diggs and the Bills' shortcomings on it, which is why it annoys me. Do, how do you feel about it? <sighs> um, I mean, there could be a little bit too there. Like when you see Mahomes working out and doing everything, oh. like, uh, like he has his training facility, $30 million at his own home, whatever. I see it. But ultimately, yeah, like it's super annoying. Like he's very good at the end of the year. It's, like the Jets game, people blame the Jets game on his workout regimen, like the week one, because he was golfing and needs needs months of mechanics and this and that. So, so it's, it's just been a story. Now. Three weeks they scored almost forty points every single game. The following three weeks after, no, the just game. the Jets game, just the Jets game. No, that's what I'm saying. But it, yeah, oh, yeah, so yeah, just yeah. the Jets game is where. Yeah. I mean that that's what like when the, when Diggs yeah. got traded, I must have saw a dozen of those type of comments where that was the reason why people think that the Tim Graham soundbite there had something to do with that. Like uh, people think he might've went up to him and said, uh, see, this is what I'm talking about type deal. Like, the, you know, you know, not working. Like you mentioned the jets game, Kevin there, maybe that was why he, he referenced it. I mean, we're talking 40 touchdowns in four consecutive years. No one's ever done it. I, I mean, yeah, I, I don't, it's not like he's taking the off season to go in uh, and hit the McDonald's drive through every day. I mean, he's still doing, maybe he's not doing cone drills every day, but he's still active. He's still out doing stuff. And until I see a dramatic regression to where you could even consider that being one of the reasons as to why that's occurring, I just don't understand yeah. why that's a topic. Also, what didn't it just come out privately from people in the know that like he is working out. It's just that he doesn't have it on an Insta. He doesn't have a videographer going and putting together a cinematic Instagram post. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like if it's not on Instagram, it happens. Catch. Yeah. Like that's yeah, the yeah. thing. Like if you're not, if you're not posting a TikTok in the gym, you don't work hard. That's basically what it's boiled <laughs> down to, you know? Um, It's, it's definitely crazy that like people like don't recognize that these are also people. And so I'm not sure about you, but like when I like, have, and he's like, healthy every year, off, Dan, that's the other thing. And so when I have a couple of weeks off, I don't want to fucking film, bro. I don't, I don't want to do shit. anything. I want to you're not, on the, you're not the, on the beach recording Damn. vlogs, bro. <laughs> Damn, bro. I mean, it's, it's, the durability is the best point, Kevin. I mean, if, if he if he was missing three, four, five games a year, I mean, no one gets on Lamar for not working out. He's hurt every year. You know, this is why why everybody was so obsessed with what he did last year because he finally was healthy in December. I mean, Allen and Mahomes have played the most games consecutively in this league since they've entered it. And uh, I would have to imagine if you're sitting on your ass all offseason, it probably would result in at least a game or two missed. And he hasn't even suffered that. So... Yeah, like I said, so maybe it, anything it helps that he's not out there grinding ladders. Um, like maybe there's something to the reason he feels he can rehab better in season is because he rests his body for a few months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To me, it all comes back to one focal point every time. No one knows how to justify these tight losses to the Chiefs. So people just will grab onto anything that can yeah. seem to support a reason as to why the Bills are losing. Like instead of just being logical about it and saying, man, like th these guys are just on a historic run right here and they're doing it to everybody. It, 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 it comes down to finding anything else to justify it. And that's just one of those things you add to it. And we saw a ton of those with the dig situation too, where it was just constant speculation over things that no one has a clue about. Yeah. And it, I mean, it, it, it all results in nothing. It and so he still has a quarterback's coach too as well so like like he has an off-season quarterbacks coach as well so it's not like you know he's just he's sitting around with his dick in his hand and everything like that yeah i, I think, think ronald curry is his current quarterbacks coach i i think i think people are foolish to imagine he just shows up off the course uh in in august like there's no way he's not i think people confuse oh i'm not you know i'm not in the football field i built in my backyard like Mahomes doing ladder drills maybe we'll confuse that with just doing nothing at all i think that's that, that's the biggest problem is that people just assume if you're not doing the most you're doing nothing at all yeah
But maybe he should hire a videographer and and, and start going on Instagram. Uh, maybe he's got like, fire <laughs> yeah, emoji, maybe. fire emoji, fire emoji, fire yeah. emoji. Exactly, like some amazing transitions. Uh, you know, like the new Kendrick Lamar song or whatever. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. they'll just love it. They'll love it. Uh, dude, fucking. Hell. What he's gonna well, love I... more is some new some new weapons in two weeks. That's what he's gonna love even more than the workout videos. Yeah, that'll give him a reason to get out there and get acclimated yeah. with these guys. And maybe people can stop freaking bringing that up. You know, maybe. Well, guys. Maybe the fact he doesn't have receivers to work out with at the moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But Curtis Samuel, man, just chilling. Just him, Curtis, and uh, Justin Shorter. Um, oh, who, who, who the heck knows where? Yeah, Shakir, the I guess. Stuff, man, please, please, man. Yeah, I right. get that so comment. Who's he throwing to? Three Andy times Bella. a day, bro. And so what about Justin Shorter, Dan? I get that four times a day. You're like, you're like, you're like what about him? <laughs> they love what those, about the guy, man? They love those fifth guy? round receivers that, that that's like I think that's a drought mentality. Like people loved those fourth to sixth round, seventh round receiver. They just love them. Like it's yeah. like the backup quarterback. There's that's a lot it. of drought mentality that lingers. Hey, there's a lot of it. It's almost yeah. like you know how when they say and you know, you know what, uh, not when they say, but you know how it's a common occurrence for those who win the lottery to go bankrupt. Right. Yeah. Bills essentially won the lottery with Josh Allen. And a lot of people don't know what to do with what has come with that. So they resort back to the drought mentality, like you just said, Kevin, where a lot of these things just come out of a defense mechanism or fear. And it's just a different organization. So the mindset has to be different. But it, I, I, I do wonder, I can't say I don't understand it to a degree. I certainly do. When you have been uh, in, in, in the midst of a 20 year, I mean, you're watching it with the Sabres right now. If you want to go get, if you want to go reminisce on what this was like for the Bills, just go over to Sabres Twitter for 20 minutes. You will go down the, um, you will go down the, the valley of history that the Bills were living through. You will go and see it. So just remember what it was, and then it right, starts exactly. to make a little bit more sense, and, and and you start to feel better. Justin Shorter has a better chance to not be on the roster than he does catching passes from Josh. <laughs> he has a better chance. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in to another edition of the Bills Roundtable. Uh, thank you so much once again, Zbot. Any final words before we send these guys off? I'm live at 8. We're going to talk about uh, I'm just, I'm gonna, tonight at eight on the Buffalo Fanatics YouTube channel. We're going to run through all of the major mock drafts from the big media members, try and gain a consensus on where everybody's at. Because even just today, saw one media member come up and says he's getting good vibes. The Bills are trading up to six. We saw another media member of ESPN saying all he's hearing is the Bills are trading down. So we're going to try to make sense of it all over at the uh, Buffalo Fanatics YouTube channel at eight. See what the general vibe is and what we can take away from that. What you got, Kev? Got to share my big board um, with you, Zbot. It's like a compilation of all the rankings, so it really helps oh, sweet. You get a range of like where somebody gets in their standard deviation. Like, if there's a higher standard deviation, that means he's got a bigger variance of where people think he's going to go. Oh wow, um, that's great. So yeah, so I'll share a it's tool a, that, that I too. use. Yeah, yeah, have you seen that? No, I haven't seen. It. I would love to see it. So uh, say like if, I, if I'm looking and uh, Daniel Jeremiah's got someone at 18, and, and your thing says, "Oh, we see him more at 27." That's kind of how you use it. What you're talking yeah, about? Yeah. So you can see Daniel Jeremiah's ranking there. So you can see him. Oh. Daniel Jeremiah would have him at 18, but then I can see that Chris Trapasso has him at 45. You know, you can kind of see like the big ranges that they're in, and then obviously an average composite of like their big board ranking. Did you so make it? it? You... No, it's it was actually another creator that like. Oh, that's Jack. awesome! It's a great that's idea. Awesome. So you should, yeah, definitely. It's one, I only use this board now because I don't want to go to 47 boards. I can see all their, their, um, their, 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 their graph right there. So oh, that's, that's so great. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. I just, how many, guys, how many guys does it have on it? It goes pretty deep. Wow. Pretty that's deep. As long as one person has them ranked, it goes pretty deep. Super cool. Damn, bro. All right. Scott came in and said, Hey guys, and do you see Brandon being making an aggressive move at 28 and move up to get his player stay at 28? Or do you see him move back to pick up? More picks for depth. Um, I know that I'm team trade up slightly. Same. Yep, that's where I'm at as well. That's also what I just, I think, if I had to bet on it, that's what I think is the most likely outcome, a yep. slight trade up. And then Josh Richardson at the beginning. What's up, fellas? I want the Bills to move to 35 and take Worthy and take Javon Baker at 60. The opposite. Mm. There you go. There mm. you go. That's a play. I mean, that is I'm absolutely a – I don't think they're going to do that, but that's that is absolutely in play for a move. It makes sense to double dip with Worthy and Baker too. And thus, I'm assuming in his scenario, you collect another pick there. And it's Dalton Kincaid season. Just go on ahead and bring on some Braylon Allen action in the third as well, baby. We got it all. Anyway, 
See you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you. Peace. Peace.